These are some of the other toxic thinking patterns that have been identified as major disease makers. Hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, rage, resentment, rejection, a low self-esteem and varying degrees of self-hatred, guilt and condemnation, envy and jealousy. There are many counsellors and psychologists that just make it a negative emotion. But there are positive emotions that do not come from God. For example, pride, drivenness, performance, perfectionism, success orientation. These things come across as positive drives, but they produce disease also. People who are perfectionists and who are driven to perform feel loved and accepted based on their achievements. The basis of love for these people is what they do, not who they are. There are many anxiety disorders and stress-related diseases coming out of this mentality, for example fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. Who you are as far as God is concerned is not what you do. Your identity and sense of self-worth is rooted in who you are in Christ. But in today's society, your identity is in what you do. We are a success-orientated society and if you don't measure up to the survival of the fittest, you are cast away. With performance and perfectionism comes the fear of failure because there's no allowance for weakness. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 that out of our weaknesses, he is made strong. The Bible also says in Proverbs 24 verse 16 that though the righteous may fall seven times, the Lord shall lift him up. If you don't be careful as parents, you are going to put your children into a straitjacket of performance and perfectionism that is going to cause them to suffocate in fear while you are so busy trying to form your kids into something that God never made them to be. There are also diseases that have developed because people have been driven into performance and perfectionism by churches that have religion and legalism. You are so busy conforming to the God image that you forgot to be human. In this respect, religion has literally been a killer. Religion, which is a counterfeit to the Holy Spirit, has done more damage to our children and our lives than you could imagine. That is sometimes why we can't get our kids back in church, because they have been part of a system that has removed God's love. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6 that the letter of the law kills, but the spirit of the law gives life. It is the same law, but there is a different spirit behind it. Another disease maker that I mentioned in session three is strife and gossip, because that puts your body into a toxic state of stage two and three of stress. Another toxic mentality, which for example causes Crohn's disease, which is an inflammatory disease of the intestines, is people who bear false burdens and feel responsible for other people because they can't control or fix the other person and that other person is not getting well or the person is not doing what they think they should do. So they get down into guilt and they blame themselves for the failure of another. And the guilt and self-hatred over that leads to disease. Fear, anxiety and stress. Hatred, unforgiveness and bitterness. Anger, rage and resentment. Rejection a low self-esteem and varying degrees of self-hatred, guilt, condemnation, envy and jealousy, perfectionism, drivenness to perform, where you loved and accepted based on your achievements and um, your identity and self-worth is based on what you do, strife, gossip, fault-finding and having a critical spirit. Have you noticed something about that list yet? Have you noticed that what the medical field has identified as toxic thinking patterns that lead to disease is what the Bible calls sin? Deuteronomy chapter 28 is divided into two parts. The first 14 verses speak of the blessings that come from obedience. And the second part is about the curses that will come from disobedience or sin. In Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 it says, But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all of his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. 
Moving on to verse 59. Then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary strokes and blows, great plagues of long continuance, and grievous sicknesses of long duration. Moreover, he will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt of which you were afraid, and they shall cling to you. Also, every sickness and every affliction which is not written in this book of the law, the Lord will bring upon, upon you until you are destroyed. The scripture is saying that all manner of disease is a consequence of sin and disobedience. Now, there are people who say that disease is not a curse. They say disease is just a disease. So let's do a Hebrew word study together of some of the curses that are listed in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to 61. I'm going to show you that many of these curses that came upon God's people in the Old Testament church, because they were not doers of the word, are examples of diseases that are still known to mankind today, and many Christians in the New Testament church have these problems. Coming back to Deuteronomy 28 verse 15, God said, But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Let's have a look at some of those curses. These definitions come from the Strong's Concordance. Verse 18, it says, Cursed shall be the fruit of your body. That means infertility and miscarriages. In verse 21, it says, The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee. That refers to a destroying plague producing disease or death, such as influenza like bird, uh, swine, bird and swine flu, the bubonic plague, TB, and HIV and AIDS. In verse 22, we have the word consumption. That means anemic, anorexic, to emaciate, to be thin, wasting away. And that includes anorexia, bulimia, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Then we have the word fever, that's high temperature from bacterial inflammation up to 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Extreme burning, that's a high fever over 103 degrees Fahrenheit. And anything over 103 degrees Fahrenheit is very dangerous. Verse 27, you have the words botch of Egypt. That is to burn with ulcers and boils. And by the way, boils are a physiological manifestation of rebellion. Then we have the word emrods, that's hemorrhoids. Do you think hemorrhoids are a blessing or a curse? Well, I suppose it depends where you are sitting. Then we have the word scab, that means scratching, gum disease, bleeding, scurvy. Then there's the word itch, that's scraping to produce redness, sinusitis, rashes of the skin, involving the excessive release of histamine in the body in relation to anxiety and fear that produces itching, such as allergies, for example, e eczema. You learnt about that in session four. Then we have the word, so that you cannot be healed. Here's incurable disease. There is no such thing as incurable disease. There's the word madness, that's craziness, raving lunatic, insanity, psychosis. Then there's the word blindness. That is not referring to the loss of eyesight. It means that they've lost their reasoning and they've lost their ability to understand and comprehend. That could include Alzheimer's disease. Then we have astonishment of heart. That includes all of your fear disorders, anxiety disorders, panic attacks and phobias. In verse 29, there's oppression, that is depression. In verse 35, we have disease of the knees and the legs. In verse 59, great plagues of long continuance and sore sicknesses of long duration. That's your chronic diseases. Plagues of your seed, that is genetically inherited diseases. Then in verse 61, it says also every sickness and every affliction what, which was not written in the book of the law, the Lord will bring upon you until you are destroyed. That means there are more diseases than are mentioned in the examples here. 
for every disease that we finally understand in the medical field and figure out a drug to treat it with, it seems that 10 new diseases pop up. It is our responsibility to identify the spiritual root of our disease and remove it from our life. We also see the connection between sin and disease in Isaiah chapter 1. In verse 4 it says, Our sinful nation, a people loaded with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, sons who deal corruptly, they have forsaken the Lord, they have despised and shown contempt, and provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger, they have become utterly estranged and alienated. Why should you be stricken and punished any more, since it brings no correction? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. This is a reference to psychiatric disease. And the whole heart is faint, feeble, sick and nauseated. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness or health in the nation's body, but wounds and bruises and um, fresh and bleeding stripes. This is biological disease. They have not been pressed out and closed up or bound up or softened with oil. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 6 is not only a picture of the Old Testament church, but also an accurate picture of the church today. A sick, sinning church filled with all manner of psychological and biological diseases and no ointments, in other words drugs, have been able to cure God's people. All the medical drugs that we have today cannot cure over 80% of diseases. In verse 7 to 15 of Isaiah chapter 1, God goes on to say how distasteful he found their sacrifices and burnt offerings because they were as full of iniquity as Sodom and Gomorrah. In the New Testament church today, we are doing our religious rituals and singing our songs, but we are continuing to live in strife, and bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, anger, rage, resentment, jealousy, envy, self-hatred, fear, etc. Then in verses 16 to 20 of Isaiah 1, God said, Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from my eyes, cease to do evil and learn to do what is right. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So here in Isaiah chapter 1, there is the foundation of the problem and a solution. The whole chapter is a revelation of disease in conjunction with not being a doer of the word. It is a clear illustration of the connection between sin and disease. There are some people who struggle to understand why Christians get sick. The reason that the church has the same biological and psychological diseases as the world is because we are serving the same sins with the same consequences. You see, there are two types of people that sin, sinning sinners and sinning saints.